right. Good evening. That's right. Sister Brooks is back at it again with Romans chapter 1. So I pray that you all will receive something um, from this little lesson here. I was sitting here and I was praying and I was trying to figure out, Lord, um, I don't want to sit here and complain, Lord, but, um, you know, people say that they need things in their lives, in their spiritual lives, and they want as much help as possible, you know, as much help as they can get. And so um, you pray for them and you ask God to bless them and, and then you go for it, right? All right. So on tonight, I, I just, I, I, I don't like to leave people hanging because um, for the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at Romans chapter one and, um, and we haven't really gotten to the meaty part of it. Um, oh, let me see. I think I got another little thing in here. This is my notebook here of uh, previous lessons taught. And um, yeah, okay, of previous lessons taught. So I might be referring to this as well. Don't really know how long I'm going to be broadcasting, but I just want to be ready. <clears throat> so. Um, before I get to Romans 1, I want us to, to look at this in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. I know we read it before. Um, as a matter of fact, probably was Tuesday. And, and, um, but I just want to make sure that we get um, the message that Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10 is saying to us because it is very important to get understanding as we jump into Romans 1. But anyway, Colossians um, 3 verse 5 says, to mortify or to kill or deaden or deprive of power. That's a real good one. Amplified says deprive of power. Okay? Um, Therefore your members which are upon the earth. And again, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. All right, disobedience. Okay. Hmm. In the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them. See, this is the thing. A lot of times, um, many of us act as if we were born, saved, and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, never sinned, and all that kind of stuff. No. Um, Colossians 3 is telling you that's not the case. All right? Mm. You walked in it, and you lived in it. But now, you also put off these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Stop trying to to um, clean up everybody else when you're still walking in your own filth, okay? He says, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. See, what it's telling is that you had these evil practices yourself. Now it's time for you to stop it, okay? Don't, don't be a liar. And then verse 10 says that, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. All right? So when you put on the new man, that means that you have repented. You have asked God to forgive you of your sins. You've asked God, please, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to live a, a life that is so separated from you. Those of us that want to go back and be with the Lord when he comes back for his church, you have got to live a changed life. The things that you're saying out of your mouth, the things you're thinking in your, in your um, mind, the, the, the bitterness, the anger, the malice, the, the hatred you're harboring in your heart, you've got to let these things go. And then finishing up, I just want to read one more verse of Colossians 3, which is verse 14. And it says, And above all these things, put on charity, 
And when you look at it in the Amplified, it says, and above all these things, put on love and enfold yourself with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony. All right? So what it's telling you that he wants you to put on that love, which is a bond. It, and, and that's the best thing to be bound with, love. Okay? Love is the best thing to be bound with. All right, so that was Colossians. So um, as we go into Romans chapter 1 again, like I told y'all before, I wanted to get to those, those sins, those words that a lot of us just kind of run over and don't, um, we don't really, um, we don't want to identify with them so we don't look them up to see what they mean. I looked them up, okay? <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, uh, back in 2010, when I was uh, teaching this lesson before, I looked them up. And I don't know if I did such a good, 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 good job on it, but, um, hey, I looked it up. Because I wanted to know, uh, to, to live in ignorance uh, in this day and time, mm -mm, you don't have an excuse. Uh, everybody, well, I will say most of us know how to use the Internet. We, we know how to, um, you know, like um, some people's got Alexa and all those other things. You know, they got these things at their house. And they can ask the questions and the the machine will tell them or they can just Google whatever. So um, when we are going to these words now, and I'm going to see if I was on the right track back in 2010 when I wrote this lesson before. Um, dealing with unrighteousness, I said that it is not righteous, it's sinful, and it's evil. Okay? I said that fornication was a sexual intercourse between man and woman not married to each other. Now, um, there is a lesson that I teach, have taught, rather, and, um, and, you, and when we start talking about fornication and adultery, the sexual sins like that, I want you to know that a lot of times it's what you're doing in your mind, too, okay? All right, I'm leaving that alone for right now. Then wickedness, <clears throat> which is evil, evil or morally bad in principle or in practice, okay? In principle or in practice. You got some individuals that you don't know what they are until you find out how they live, the evilness in their heart, okay? Then you got people who are covetousness or very covetous that they wrongly desire things. In other words, they want what you have, not want something similar to what you have, but they want exactly what you have, and they don't want you to have it, okay? And so, and because of that, they start coveting it. And when they start coveting it, they're going to try and figure out how it is that I can get it. That is right. We should love as the Lord wants us to love. Okay? Then you got the maliciousness or people being very malicious. Motivated by vicious, wanton, or mischievous purpose. Malicious. When they say you are malicious, I mean, you, you're going up. Ooh, ooh, you're going down. Listen to this, the rest of this. It says, desire to inflict injury or suffering on another. That's maliciousness. You're being malicious. And when you, have gotten, when you have gotten to that point in your life, that means that you are just miserable. You're a miserable individual. Okay. Yes, indeed. Okay. And then you got full of envy. A feeling of discontent or mortification with ill will. You see, as we're looking at these things, this is, this is just wickedness beyond. All right? Then you have murder, which is the unlawful killing of another human being with malice. Okay? Maliciousness, malice, ill will. Okay? Um, you want to inflict injury or suffering on someone? When you want to murder someone, be it verbally or physically, you don't want that individual to survive. And that is so sad. All right? Then you got, now in high school um, and probably college, you have um, students who debate. It's a class, right? 
And so they discuss or they argue. We're not talking about that type of debating. We're talking about a negative. You can't say nothing nice at all. You're constantly arguing, constantly bringing up stuff that should have been buried years ago. And you just want to continue to, to have a, a, a relationship where everybody is at each other. They don't have any kind words for anyone. That, that's sad. And then deceit which is an act or practice of deceiving, perversion of the truth. In other words, you're twisting the truth. That's a cute way of saying you're just telling a lie. All right, for the purpose of misleading or fraud, when you, ooh, when you deceive somebody, okay, that means that number, now you're lying. And then you're trying to get something from them at any type of a cost without any problems on your end. Isn't that something? You want to deceive them. You want to, like the old people said, pull the wool over their eyes. Hmm. Malignity, which is a state or character of being malign, which is to speak ill of or to slander. Okay? Then you have whisperers. That's to talk softly and privately. Got your little parenthesis here. Often with implication of gossip, slander, or plotting. Close parenthesis. Okay? You got a backbiter. To attack the character or reputation of someone secretly. Haters of God. You have a strong negative feeling toward God. Now, these are just the, 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 I'm pretty sure you can find definitions for these words somewhere else other than like I found them. But these were the ones that spoke to me, okay? All right. Despiteful, contemptuous, malicious, spiteful. Got spite in there again. Mm. Proud. Now, when I tell you that I am very proud of myself, I'm not saying that I'm better than you. What I'm saying is that I've survived some very negative things in my past without bringing someone else down or trying to ruin someone else's character. So when I say I'm proud about that, that's a different from the way um, Romans 1 is talking here. It is talking about being arrogant or insolent or overbearing behavior arising from an exaggerated belief in one's importance. Okay? I'm pretty sure you've met some people that you kind of said some things like, they think they something. And if you've been through what I've been through, yes, I am something. Okay? God has, has, has taken me from near-death experience to right where I am sitting now. Doctors keep telling me, your blood count, you're, you're doing good, you're doing good. And I keep saying, well, why am I in pain 24-7? And they just kind of shake their head. But you're doing good, Robin, you're doing good. <laughs> hmm, take the pain away without drugs, narcotics, and stuff like that. Just <laughs> bolsters. Again, right there with the proud. You're bragging, your vocal self-praise or claims to superiority over others. <laughs> you think you something, don't you? Yeah, I am something. I'm better than you, publican. And Yeah, no. Inventors of evil things. And I got on here thinking of new ways to sin. I was uh, watching some trailers um, as I was looking at TV, and I thought to myself, my goodness, who sits around and think of stuff like this? And why? And then you got the, uh, us that be like, oh, that's going to be good. Sometimes you need to watch what you're watching on television, okay? Watch the um, videos that you watch. Watch the whatever it is. You need to be very careful about what you're putting in your eyes that goes right on into your soul, all right? 
disobedient to parents, not complying with the wishes or rules of your parents. Bible tells you to obey those that have the rule over you, right? So that means your parents as well. Because, check it out. I think the age, it used to be until you turn 18, then you, you know, you're on your own. I think you got to be 21 now and all that kind of stuff. And then they was talking about if the kids get in trouble, the parents are going to be the ones that's going to pay for it. You know, I love my son. I love him dearly. But if that joker go out there and do something that he knows we have taught him not to do, and he go and waltz his little self out there and do it, guess what? The police and the judge might hold me accountable, but I'm going to tell them, give me about 10 good minutes with him. Just give me, just give me 10 good minutes with him. I, I just 10 good minutes because he knows better. And see, and if you, the Bible tells you to train the child in the way that it should go. So if I'm putting into him negative stuff, then I shouldn't expect anything positive out of him. But if I am being a godly mother, trying to teach him the right way, and he still goes out there and do something negative, I just need, I just need to whip him one more good time. You know, if you're going to take me to jail, then let me get a piece of him. That's all I'm asking, you know. So, anyway, I love you, Jarius. Mommy, love you. Okay. Without understanding, as I told y'all before, confused fools. Confused without understanding. You know, you got some people, like I said, when I read these, these this, this Romans 1 back years ago, didn't understand the words, so I just breezed right on by them. Um, I can remember you You look at a word, especially um, lasciviousness. I probably still can't pronounce it right. But anywho, when I go to that word, I go, oh, I don't understand it. And keep on going. No. When God started making me to be, when he started making me into the teacher that I am, I began to get friendly with dictionaries and thesauruses and start looking these words up. And then... I'm trying to get a clear understanding so that whenever I am teaching, I don't sound overly ignorant. I mean, come on. The, the, the King James Version is a tongue twister to many of us. Okay? That's why when they give us the Amplified, the New American Standard, NIV, New Century, whatever, you know, all these different translations of the word, um, it kind of helps us out. So that's what I'm planning to do tonight. Okay, then you have covenant breakers, and we know what a covenant is. We know. You know. And if you are a type of a person who goes around just to, to make it hard for somebody else, something truly is wrong with you. You need God in your life. Definitely. Definitely. You got to learn to keep your promises. If you promise or if you put your word out there and say, this is what I am going to do, it is best that you go ahead and do it. You said you was going to do it, then do it. Without natural affection, I said that was unsociable. Implacable, I says not to be appeased or pacified. I gave you the example of the little baby. Um, you swallowed it, you wrapped it up real tight, and it still was crying. You picked it up, it still was crying. You gave it something to eat, and then all of a sudden it stopped crying. Why? Because that's what it wanted. It wanted to be fed. Sometimes they just want to be held, too. And Auntie Robin is not a baby holder. You know, Omar don't hold babies, especially crying babies. I'll jostle you around a little bit and see if you'll hush up. And then it's, you, you're on your own, buddy. You better lay down there and enjoy yourself. And then unmerciful. You're cruel and you're merciless. So this is what I wanted to share with you all tonight. <clears throat> I had told y'all I wanted to give you those words. I wanted to explain those words to the best of my ability. But now, this is what I want you to understand. Came up. This is when I was praying and I was like, Lord, you know, what, what am I going to teach on tonight? And he said this, that of these sins of Romans chapter 1, verses 29 through 31, he said these sins were mental sins, 
which are mental or spiritual, okay, physical spin, sins, and spoken sins. Now, you don't have to agree with me. This is just Sister Brooks. This is, you know, this is me. For the spiritual or the mental sins, I said, unrighteousness, okay? You can act unrighteous. I, I know that. I know that. But it is an inward thing. This is your lifestyle. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Wickedness. It's a lifestyle. You choose to do these things. Covetousness. You choose to, to, to want something that doesn't belong to you. You choose that. You choose to be malicious. You choose to be full of envy. You choose to see this is a, a spiritual thing. This is something that you sit and you stew on. You work on that mentally. You work on that. You choose to be a murderer. You choose that. Be it that you're going to kill them with your mouth or physical. However, you choose this. This is a thing from your heart. Glory be to God. Haters of God. This is a choice that you make. You decide that you no longer want God in your life. You make that decision. Now, okay, I understand that uh, many of you all say, well, if sister so-and-so, if brother so-and-so, or you know, yeah, you're going to find a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. Get over it. Move on. Learn how to, like I used to say when it came to reading and the understanding of the word of God. And if a preacher or a teacher is teaching something and you go, wait a minute, does the Bible really say that? Let me, hold on, let me show y'all something. And I advise you all to get one of these. If a preacher says something I don't quite understand, oh, I write it down. I'll write it down. And, and then I will go back later on and try and figure out what was he or she saying. What were they teaching about? You understand? You don't you have to get ignorant and stuff like that. Or you can just, after the service, go up and, and say, well, pastor or sister or, you know, whoever, um, you said such and such. What did you mean by that? You don't have to be belligerent and ignorant about it. Write these things down. That way then you can study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I had to put my hand on my hip, y'all. That one felt good. Ooh, that, one, that one felt pretty good now. <laughs> that one felt pretty good. All righty here now. I said, hey, there's a God. Despiteful. That's another spiritual thing. Spiteful self. Proud. Pride. 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 Inventors of evil things. Lord have mercy. You sit there and think of something to do. You sit there. Honey, Sister Brooks, I sat there. I sat in my house for months because I was hurting so bad. And I sat there and I was like, man, mm, I need to figure out. I need to learn something else to do. So I started back going back trying to knit. All I knew how to do was knit. That's all I knew how to do was knit and then knit. It was just one stitch. I knew how to do that. Didn't know how to cast off. I knew how to cast on, but didn't know how to cast. So when I went home to Or um, Orangeburg, to, to uh, Columbia, South Carolina, my cousin showed me how to cast off. And I was like, whoa. I can't remember if she taught me how to purl. I think she did. But... Could not figure it out. I just, I mean, I watched her and I practiced it. Did, and then when I got back home up here and I was just sitting there and I was thinking about it. And then, bing, it, it occurred to me how to do it. And then I sat there and I did it and I was just so happy. So if I'm going to invent something or if I'm going to learn something, trust me, it's going to be something for my good. That's the same thing with me learning how to make soap. I remember Mother Dolores Latson, God bless her. I went home to see her this year um, before she transitioned to be with the, with the singing sisters. 
Mother um, Mildred Washington and um, Mother Althea Green, those three, you know, and Mother Latson, they sung up something when we were young. Oh, my goodness. And so I, uh, I told Mother Latson, I said, Mother Latson, I, I learned how to make soap. And she says, you're making soap with old grease? And see, if I hadn't, uh, you know, read some books and looked at some videos and stuff like that, I wouldn't have understood what she meant. But they made soap from your frying grease. And they and now you got people that's still doing it. They're going to the restaurants and they're getting the old grease. That's why they have a special container now for the grease and they're cleaning the grease up and some people are cleaning it to the point where they can make soap out of it. Isn't that beautiful? Nothing wasted. And so I figured, well, let me try my hand at this. And the first batch it was a bust. It really was. It was a mess. I don't know what I did. I know I think I do know what I did. I don't think I understood how to properly um, use my scale. So I think I put too much of something in there and it was a mess. It was a truthful mess. But I got it going on now. So those of you, and I'm just going to give you a little blurb. Um, those of you that would like to buy some soap, contact me and I'll be more than happy to ship you some soap. And, um, or you can come down here to the church, and I will be more than happy to sell you some soap. Okay, moving right along of inventors. But that's what I'm talking about, being inventing stuff. You've got to learn how to do some stuff. If you can't do something, um, learn how to do it. If it interests you. So I don't know what the next couple of months is going to bring. What, what new thing... I am going to, that my mind or that the, the devil tell me, you ain't going to be able to do that. And I'm saying, hmm, I'm not, eh? Let me see if I can study up on it. Okay? I didn't know how to make jam and jelly or bread. And trust me, I read up on it and I can make jam and jelly and I can make some bread. Okay? So, tell me I can't do something. My joints might hurt me real bad and I mean from up here all the way down to my feet, but I'm still going to move on in Jesus' name. And see, and that's what the devil don't want us to do, y'all. He does not want us to move upward forward. So you have got to learn that you are beautiful, wonderfully made. God loved you so much that you did not die in the womb, and you are still alive right now. So stop telling yourself you can't and start telling yourself I can learn, okay? I'm not the sharpest pencil in, in, in the pouch, but if God give me something to do and if and my interest, and if it's not against God, then you bet your better bippy I'm going to go ahead and try and do it, okay? All right. So I said inventors of evil things and without understanding. The only reason why you don't have understanding is that you're not studying, you're not trying to understand. You've got to try to understand. That's what teachers are for, preachers, all of those. That's that's what they're for. You, I mean, you got these women and men that go to college for four years and some of them perfected even all the way up to their PhD to be able to teach you something. All right? So without natural affection, you, you can't continue to blame the fact that your mother and father did not hug you enough. You can't, you, you know, you just can't. Now you can say, well, even if I did not get that type of affection, I can learn to be affectionate. This is a thing that you have got to want to do. But see, see what I'm saying? That this is a spiritual, this is a, a mental thing. This is something that you are holding yourself back from. Right? Implacable. Remember when I said that, that that person, you can't, you cannot pacify them or please them no matter what you do. That's their choice to be that way. They choose to be that way. And then you got some people that are unmerciful. They sit there and think of a way to get on your nerves. You're sitting there saying, would you please help me? And they sitting there making sure that you are not going to be pleased in any way. You ask them for mercy and they just know no mercy. Okay? 
Sometimes I wish, you know, some of the um, convicted felons that really did these, these horrible things that we were looking at television, that instead of throwing them back out here with us, y'all need to go ahead on and keep them if they're not going to change their behavior and their lifestyle. Now, there are some people that, that do change, even if they've done something very terrible, but they realize this was not what I should have done, and they change, okay? So people can change. The physical um, aspects of Romans 1, 29 through 31, I, I said fornication, as you all know, that is something that your body will do um, if you don't keep it um, under subjection of the Holy Spirit. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Then you have murder. That's a physical thing, either verbally or physically. You could be a deceiver. All right? That's something that you can do. Pride, you know, you can be proud and you can act it out too. The adventures of evil things, something that you physically can do. Disobedient to parents and being unmerciful. Again, a physical thing. Not only are they some spiritual things and mental things that you do, but it's also a physical thing that you can do as well. And then the third one was spoken. And I put down here, again, murder. You can murder someone with your voice. Okay? You can speak death. Um, isn't it scripture, the power of life and death is in the tongue? Where is that at? Mm. Let's see if I can find that. The power of life and death. I think that, wasn't that in... Uh, Mm. Uh oh. Now watch, I'm not going to be able to find it now. Okay. But I do know that that's in there. That the, pow the power of life and death is in. Oh. Isn't that something? You don't even have it in here. Ah! That's all right. I can find it. Just don't know where it's at right now. But if y'all ask me, I will find it. Hold on now. Let me see here. Oh, I don't like to be defeated. Y'all should know that by now. If I can find it, I'm good. If I can't find it, I'm going to keep looking until I find it. Okay, so you ain't going to give it to me, huh? It's all right. I got one other place to find it. Hold on. Praise the Lord, Elder. How you doing? It's good to see that you're here with me. Yeah, fooey. Didn't find it. But, uh oh. I didn't look in the right place. T O. Yeah, here we are. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Not in either one of them, but that's okay. I'll find it later on. Let me write that down. Where is that at? Power of life and death. Okay, now those were the mental and the and the physical ones, and for the spoken ones, you got I said murder, debate, always arguing and carrying on, deceit. That's a spoken one. You can be very deceitful, and you can tell people malignity. Y'all remember what I said that malignity was to speak ill of, slander. All right, whispers. Okay, backbiters. Now. We should know that if a person is still in their sins, that they're going to do these things. But once you say that you are a child of God, and you know you're doing these things, you should do your level best not to do it anymore. And that's where fasting and prayer comes into play, okay? Boasting, disobedient to parents. Like, um, I remember when my son was little and, um, and I asked him a question and he told me, I'm not going to tell you. And I said, Oh, oh, wait a minute. And I said, you and I don't have any secrets. 
And he still didn't want to tell me, but I told him, you don't have secrets from mommy. Because I meant that thing. Because I don't want him to, to wind up wishing that he could talk to his mother and he can't. Or wishing that he can talk to his father and he can't. Um, I don't want my child to go around and, and, and to say, I never was able to talk to them about anything personal and all that kind of stuff or just about anything. I want him to be able to come to me and say, Mom, you know, whatever the situation is, and we can talk, okay? So I don't ever want him to be disobedient to me. And I am, trust me, I am 62 beautiful years on this earth, and I have yet to be disobedient or disrespectful to my mom. Although we don't have the most wonderful relationship, but that's her choice, and it's not mine, okay? And a covenant breaker. That is something that you do. All right? So if you have your Amplified Bible, uh oh, wait a minute, somebody giving it to me. There you go. Thank you, Candy. Proverbs 18 12. All right. I knew somebody was going to find it. Because I was going to keep looking for it. Proverbs 18. I bet I got it marked in here, too. Ha ha ha. That ain't it. You said Proverbs 18, 12? Wait a minute, let me see. Yeah, Proverbs 18. Robin, what are you looking at? Oh, you're not looking at 12. No, it ain't. Uh, that's not it. I got here Proverbs 18, 12. It says, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Oh, I thought you had it from a candy. Oh, 21. Let me see. Did somebody say 21? Yeah, nope. 12. Okay, hold on. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Thank you, Candy. Says we was in the ballpark. It's what you say. What you say. 18, 21. A lot of times people, that, you know, like when I was younger, I ran my mouth. Oh, my goodness. Gee whiz, I ran my mouth. And, and I've said some things to people in my past. And, and I just don't realize how, you know, how I managed to continue to keep friends with my mouth. Um, it was, I guess you could say it was a, I was a clown. I'll just put it like that. I was just clowning around, laughing, joking, all this kind of stuff. So, but, but you know what? God blessed me because like, um, I was not evil with it. I just like to have fun. I, I like to see people laughing because people take life so, you know, t t holiness. I'll say this. They take holiness so serious that we can't laugh and have fun and all that kind of stuff. Man, we should be the most happiest people in the world to be able to live a life that we know is pleasing to God. We should be the most happiest people in the world. We should be very happy. And so with that, you guys, that was what I came up with um, for the lesson tonight because I've pretty much taught um, the majority of this, of Romans um, 1, but I wanted to make sure that I got to those words and spoke to you all um, in regards to those words. All right. So um, I've pretty much done what I what I came down here to do. Um, looked at these words and oh, there is one that I really want to read to you all too. Um, for those of you that can and will, turn to Job, Job twenty four. I want you to look at this because this was kind of this was kind of juicy here. Job 24 and 19. And listen to what it says. Drought and heat consume snow waters. So doth the grave those which have sinned. Okay? Remember when I, I told you guys about the handout that I made and it was said the, the results of sin? Well, that one in itself, that struck me really really good because it's letting you know that 
the drought and the heat, it's going to melt snow. And, and people are having, uh, um, the scientists and whatnot are very, very concerned about our glaciers and the, um, you know, all the snow that is melting and all this kind of stuff, global warming, El Nino, El Nina, all of those um, situations and the heat and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, the Bible is saying that. It's going to melt it. But the grave is going to take those who sin. So if it is in your desire to be saved, I will pray with you tonight. Uh, even if you need a healing in your body. And trust me, now I, I just want to I want to throw this out here just so that people will not um, think that uh, healing means, I mean, I am completely healed. I don't feel no pain and the doctor don't find nothing wrong with me and all that kind of good stuff. Sometimes your healing is a spiritual healing. When this illness came on my body, and I'm only going to talk about Robin. I'm not going to talk about nobody else. The Lord spoke into my spirit because I was, I was totally upset and I just did not understand it. And the Lord said, this is something you have to go through. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Lord, I'm physically fit. I have stayed away from drugs and alcohol. And you're telling me all of a sudden now that I'm not going to be able to do the things that physically I could do? you got to be kidding me, God. You know I like to get in my car and jet. You know that. I mean, if there's a service and if I can get to it in my car, I'm ready to go. And you going to tell me I'm going to live with chronic fatigue, chronic pain. <laughs> I said, this guy, got a, he's got a sense of humor. But my soul is healed because I'm not bitter about it anymore. And I still get to do the things that I can do. Okay? I'm reminded of when last year I was able to go to San Diego and I had myself a good time. The body might have been hurting, but boy, I had a good time. And I praise the Lord for that. I went to, where did I go? I went to... Um, I just came back from um, Louisiana, not Louisiana, what was that, Kentucky. And then I went to South Carolina and I went to, I mean, I get to go. I might not can go as much as I used to go, but I can still go. And so when God, when, when one door in your life has, been, has shut by God, I mean, he closes the door and you get a little upset with him and you go to him in prayer. And you whine and you complain about it. And you get the answer that you weren't expecting. Live with it. Live with God's answer for you. Live with it. And find joy. Trust me, I got joy in my heart. I got it. I, I know I have it. Because if I didn't have the joy of the Lord in my heart, I would not be able to sit before you right now with the conviction of telling you that God will heal you. He will heal you. And trust me, he can heal you. I mean, take away the physical attributes of whatever it is. There are some, there are some people that, I know one sister, um, and I, I, I hope she doesn't mind me talking about it. But she she said, Sister Brooks, I I looked at my hand and I could see my hand slumping down. And I, I held my hand up and said, see my hand, Jesus? She was having a stroke. And trust me, that sister, all she thought about was dancing before the Lord. And she said that she that was the main thing that she was really worried about. Can I still dance before God? Now, Sister Brooks came can't pick them up and put them down like she used to. But trust me, I'll pat that foot. And if he moves this body, trust me, I'm going to move this body in joy and happiness to God. So trust me, God will and can heal you. Where is your faith? Now, do I not have faith that, I, that my body can be healed? Trust me, my faith is, is that I'm going to wake up one morning and I'm not going to feel no pain nowhere. I'm going to be able to walk. I'm going to be able to run like I used to run. I didn't, I'm not telling you I was a track star all my life. I, you know, I did my track in, in high school and, and that was enough. 
And then when I went to boot camp, they wanted me to run. And I was like, y'all must be crazy. I trot around this little field here. But as soon as you stop looking at me, I'm walking. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't run. I'm not a runner. But when, ooh, but when God gets into them legs and he starts to run at me, trust me, I'm going to run. But the thing of it is, is that if you want to be healed, if you want to be saved, give your life, everything about your life, your talents. Don't let your body take its last breath with a talent still left within it. Let God use you till he uses you up. And trust me, that's what Sister Brooks is doing. So let's pray right now, trusting and believing that God is going to do what he says he's going to do in your life. Now, if you haven't talked to God about the situations in faith, remember the scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right, the right now stuff. If you're just playing with God and trying to use him as a, as a scapegoat so that you can be bitter because of what has happened in your body, then that's you. I was, I, was, I was upset, but I didn't let that root of bitterness stay in my heart. Trust me, I got it up out of there. Because God is able to do wonderful things. And if you sit there and you continue to be bitter, then trust me. There is not going to be no joy nowhere. God is able to save you. He is able to heal you. And if you have a habit that you are holding on to, he's able to deliver you from that. But you've got to, let, you've got to want to let it go. You've got to want to let it go. So right now, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray for each and every one of you right now, hallelujah, that God will move in your life mightily, that whatsoever his will is for you, it will be done. But you, you, my sister, you, my brother, is going to have to want God to do it for you, and you got to want to live for him totally without no excuse, no exceptions. God, here I am. I give myself to you. I am sorry for my sins. I repent and I ask that you will constantly bring them before me so that I will be able to repent of them all. God, so that whenever my time to take my last breath comes, I'll be able to see you when I wake up. So I trust and pray that right now that you all have got something from the lesson tonight. You know how to write me. I am cissoldier2 at comcast.net, and um, if you want to send me an email, <clears throat> I know I got a, one of the mothers says, Sister Brooks, you don't look at your email enough, but eventually I'll get to it, you know, and y'all know my phone numbers, all, those of you that know me, you know how to get in touch with me, so I don't know if you can see that, is it backwards? I don't know if it's backwards or not, let me hold still. Sissoldier2 at Comcast.net. There's my phone number, my address. So if you want to get in touch with the sister, here I am. I am Teton Ministries, Heavenly Hands Ministries, that God is able to do all things but fail. So you all keep me in prayer that I will walk the way the Lord wants me to walk and be what he wants me to be in these last and evil days. I thank you all for coming. And I pray that you all definitely have received something of the Lord and that um, you will, your life will continue to be enriched. And um, I believe that's, that should be it. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? I know that we've been here almost an hour. And so I'm opening it up that if you have any questions at this time. And if not, then Sister Brooks is going to sign out. Let me see. You're welcome, Candy. So, oh, Job, what did I say? Oh, Job 24, 19. That was Job 24, 19. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a lot of good ones here. Um, some was just, just very tasty. One of them said, if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? And that was in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 25. And you know what's so sad is that 
you know how you get these Bibles and you read through the Bible a whole year? Just imagine how much we've read and forgotten. All right? So, okay, guys. I am going to sign off now. I, I had a wonderful time with you all, and I pray that you all enjoyed it as well. And um, I pray that you all will um, continue to um, pray for House of Faith, that we will be with Christ to have us to be in these last and evil days. All right? So y'all be at peace and know that Sister Brooks loves you. And if I don't get to see you today, then maybe I'll get to see you another day. So take care and God bless. Sister Brooks out. Peace. I love you too. Peace.